You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. What is going on everyone? Welcome along to our AC Milan career mode series on FIFA 20. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Well, this is episode 2. If you haven't watched episode 1, I do highly suggest you go and watch that one first before coming on to this episode. It was an exciting game for sure. So we got fairly busy episode today. Um, a few things to get through. We've got two games. We've got one against Brescia and then uh, Hayas Verona. Um, so really looking forward to those two games. Uh, we've also got chance for deadline day in the middle of it, tucked up there, uh, along with bits and pieces here and there. So nothing's happened since uh, the last episode. We ended it just after the game, um, and it was that loss against Udinese. So you know, we just go on as normal, I guess. We just got to keep working, keep hoping that we can uh, improve in terms of. Uh, notifications, Bonaventura is asking to uh, to play in the game. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to play him because he play, came on and played very well. Of course, got the goal. So, um, really delighted with his impact. We will bring him in for Perqueta. Um Let's do this press conference. Why not? Um, I can imagine they're going to get a bit repetitive. But, um, you know, for now, we'll go, we'll go along with them. So it's not been the great start to the season so far and qualifying for the Champions League. It should be a difficult ask now. I mean, it's only been one game. Um, does the team have the quality to get back on track? Um, of course. Yeah, it does. Um, the questions aren't the best and I can imagine this is going to get repetitive and a little bit frustrating. How have you prepared for the next match against your rival Brescia? Um, we are ready. Uh, actually, I'll say it's like any other match. To be honest, we're going to this one with the same attitude. As any other match, um, you've been quite busy on the transfer market so far with no more than three players sold. Should we expect to see some new face at the club until the end of the transfer window? Well, this is something I want to talk to you guys about, really. Um, do I don't think I do in the first transfer window. I'm going to give a chance to the players. Of course, we signed Ravich, but he's already there in real life. You know, I think we're going to go along with it. Uh, but, of course, you guys keep getting your transfer suggestions in, obviously. And, uh, you know, we'll... We'll go along and, and see if we can bring anyone in, in in January and stuff. But for now, I think we're going to stick to the base that we have here and give the players an opportunity to you know, really improve, see what they can do, show me that they are a part of this team. So that was a pretty straightforward press conference. Looking at the team now, of course, these guys are all happy, but you know, other people have been playing up a bit. We're going to bring in Bonaventura. We're also going to bring in Lau for Piotek because... Um, for those of you who did watch episode one, he of course came on and set up the goal. Um, didn't get a lot of opportunity to show what he could do, but you know I, I think he might be, um, you know, he might have something to offer. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh, just wondering, do I want to bring in Benaker or Krunic for Bilia because he didn't play very well? You know, I think I'll give Bilia one more opportunity, but you know they are both breathing down his neck, so he should expect to uh, to. You know, be wary, start performing better because uh, his performance in the last game was below par, below par. So, yeah, I think I think that's really it. I think we can we can go with that. To be honest, there's not anything else that, that I want to swap. So, yeah, let's get ready for the game today against Breski. It's going to be a tough game. They've got some good players, of course. They have just been promoted, but you know, I do expect us to uh, to come away with the three points. We should be coming away with the three points here. So, without further ado, let's see what we can do in this game. Our main feature today on EA TV, two great clubs. It's coming up for you live. We are at the San Siro Stadium today, and a great day it is too. Martin Tyler here along with Alan Smith. We have Serie A action for you. This looks like a really good game, Alan. Yeah, thanks, Martin. 
I think both teams here are going to be positive. They are set up to attack, so I'm expecting a few goals here today. I don't want to put the mockers on, but I am expecting a few. Two changes for Milan. Gianluigi Donnarumma is the goalkeeper. Davide Calabria plays alongside Teo Hernandez in defence. And just one out-and-out -out attacker in the lineup. This is how the opposition will line up. 4-4-2, but a diamond shape is how he's gone, particularly during matches. It may be that he's going to start with a diamond today. Yeah, but I've seen this manager so often switch formations midstream during the course of a match, and we might see that again today. Here we go, and as you can see, Brescia got some very good players including the likes of one Mario Balotelli, Sandro Tanali in the team as well, Riedeveld goes there, it's going to be a tough game, hopefully we can get the three points. We're going to feed through Balotelli, Donnarumma will claim that one though. Strong throw, Liao, went over to Suso. Suso, he's going to work on the inside now, he wants to get himself onto that left foot and it opens up for him a little bit, he's going to go to Rebic, Rebic will go along, Liao's there, can he make it 1-0? He can, really good build up play and a great start to this game for AC Milan, he gets his first start and Liao is the one to open the scoring, Ante Rebic is the one with the assist but it's brilliant build up play all round, Suso should uh, get massive credit for this. He really makes something happen. It's a good ball to Rebic. He only has to pass it along the face of goal. It's a little bit over hit, to be honest. Not as neat as perhaps you thought it would be. But thankfully, it does go in. That's always the most important thing. And a great start to this game for Milan. Good reaction to the result last time out. 1-0. Over to Lia. Yeah, he's looking for an overlap of some sort. He'll find Suso. Suso wants to get it back onto his left foot. Goes for goal. Good save. Strong hands from the keeper. They'll clear it. Only as far as Hernandez, though. Calabria looking for a give and go. Ball fed into Liao. Kessier, it's a good run. Safe from the keeper again. Brescia clear again. Palatelli and Calabria having a little bit of a tussle in this corner. He looks to whip it in. Oh, it's an overhead kick. Save from Donnarumma. That was a little bit of a spectacular there. We can play out from the back, but it's a, it's a warning sign. Bilia. Come out wide to Calabria now. We spread the play well. Calabria looking for a give and go. Suso looks to return it to him. And it's good running. Calabria, he took his touch well, but he's too slow. But he wins it back though, poor defending, Liao's there to tap it in and get his second of the game and Milan's second of the game. The work is from Calabria but Brescia, poor defending on their part. They'll be very disappointed with how that went down. Calabria originally gets onto the ball but loses it out because of the pace. But the defender rather than clearing it, he tries to sprint out, play out from the back. Calabria has got him. In his pocket in that situation, he only has to lay it off to Liao. It's great positioning from Liao, it's got to be said. He does really well to, uh, to well, he just shows the instinct. Gets his second of the game. It might both be tappings, but goals are goals. And that's the most important thing. 2-0, good first half for us so far. And as we play it at the field here, it should be half-time. Yeah, it is. That's a really good first half from us. Much better than uh, what happened last week. Possession-wise, we've really dominated the game. We're creating much more chances as well. It's been a far more complete performance from us this time around, as you can see. Um, you know, there's a little bit of things we could improve on. I think we could be creating more chances, to be honest. I think some people are giving the ball away too easily. I'm actually going to take Billy off. He's, he's not played very well. He's got a booking. And we're going to give Benakay's first start 
of the season, well, his first game of the season, anyway, uh, essentially his debut. So let's see what he can do in the second half. Oh, to be fair, he's absolutely violated Romagnoli there, who's lost the ball again. Balotelli now, doing one-on-one -on -one with Caldara. Calabria needs to work the right-hand side here. They'll come inside. Oh, he's repealed off his man, and they should score. He's got to score. That is poor defending from us. The man doesn't follow him. Not sure who he was, actually. It's Zadas, who has that opportunity. I think he's got to score there. It's laid on a plate for him. The defending's poor. And that is a warning sign. Suso to come back onto his left foot. He's got options. Rebic is at the far post. No, it was Hernandez, actually. And that's close. Rebic, good tracking back yet again. Brilliant play from him. Wins it well. Benekir. Bonaventura. Liao. Got runners. He's going to look for Suso. Finds him as well. That's a really good ball. Suso. Can whip it across. Bonaventura's there on the receiving end. Keeper parries it. Kessier, what will he do with it now? Benekir's free on the edge. He's found him as well. He's got Kessier. Back to Benekir. He'll unleash one. Oh, that's pretty simple. Suso. Looks for a give and go with Kessier. Into Liao. One more. Rebic is there. He'll go for goal, sneaks in in the near post. And that is game set and match. Milan 3, Brescia 0. Ante Rebic with his first goal since joining the club. And that is nice play. We go into the end. It's Liao who sets him up this time. And Rebic, he's got options in the box, but he just decides to go for goal. Somehow it sneaks in at the near post. The keeper is going to be very disappointed that he doesn't deal better with this. It actually comes off the post as well. But we'll take it. It doesn't matter. It's been a thoroughly deserved win for us. We've been by far the better team. And uh, it's great to get off the board with three points. As they kick off here, I'm expecting it to be full time. Yes, it is. What is Balotelli doing down there? That's really weird. But it, never mind, it's 3 0 in the end. And it's uh, a much better response. Great response to the loss last week. Really pleased with how we played today. It's much more like um, you know, the way in which we're trying to, we're trying to implement. And uh, Liao as well. Fair play to him. Two goals and an assist out of nowhere. Fair play got to say he um, he really shone today played very well comes in from Piotek who you know had a bad game last time out and uh, he has more than staked his claim for a place in the first team delighted with his performance today as we uh, come on to do this post-match interview I've got a feeling these are going to become a little bit repetitive so um, you know we'll see how this one goes um, you know with Romagnoli yeah he did play well today although he did get uh, blitzed one or two times um, you know, he, he played well overall. Liao as well. Um, you know, we'll try and boost his morale. He's very happy. It does, of course, boost their ratings as well. You dealt a strong blow to your rival today. Did you prepare differently for this match? All matches are equally important. That's what we're saying. And the players absolutely love it as well. So morale is uh, on a high right now. But there's no beating around a bush. We are straight in to transfer deadline day. And to be honest with you, in terms of incoming, there's not a lot I want to do. Like I say, I want to give opportunity to uh, to the players. We've had a transfer offer for Pepe Reina. Now, we have a look here. 2.6 million, to be honest. I don't see the point in selling him because then we've got to recall someone and we've got to sign a keeper. We'll just keep him there. For the sake of 2 million, it really isn't worth it. He's still a very good keeper and he can come in and do a job if needed. So, um, you know, I've got no sort of qualms about keeping him here for the sake of what two three million um but like i say in terms of incomings i really don't see uh, the need to sign any right now um you know if we come to january transfer window we're struggling maybe we feel we need something of course then we'll we'll go out and sign people and like i say you guys make sure you keep the suggestions coming to me um, we've had an offer for Ricardo Rodriguez. Now, this is an interesting one. Arsenal did come in for him before. And if we can get 25 million for him, I'm prepared to sell him. Because we do have other left-backs. We've also got Diego Lazao as well as a left-back. Of course, we've got Theo Hernandez. So, if we can get 25 million for him here, I'll be very pleased with that. And I will accept that. Uh, so, we're going to ask for that. Our assistant says that we can ask for this much. Um, 
then, well, it's looking like they're not willing to part with that. We'll ask for 24 instead. Anything above maybe 22, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to accept. Let's go up to 23 here and see if he'll uh, accept that deal. Yeah, he will. Pep Guardiola says we will pay a fee of 23 million. So that's a lot of money for a player who I don't think is going to really uh, get much game time over the likes of Hernandez and Lazal. So hopefully we can get that deal done before the line, um, well, before the deadline ends. We've got a little bit of money to work with should we need it in January. Of course, got to bear in mind financial fair play, though. Um, you know, as, like I say, it's a realistic rebuild. We have to bear in mind we can't just go out and sign lots of players. Manchester United have come in for Giacomo Bonaventura. Now, that's a. To be honest, I think he's worth a lot more than that, he, despite the fact he's 30, especially to us, um, and the fact he's just broke into the first team. I am going to reject that offer. I'm not looking uh, to sell Bonaventura, to be honest. I think he, he's definitely a part of our, of our long term uh, sort of planning. So, you know, we'll reject that offer. An offer for Lazal? Well, you know, if we, we're not going to sell him if we're selling Rodriguez. That would leave us short. So, um, you know, I am going to reject that offer as well. So the fee's not, probably not enough. Not, not what I'm looking for anyway. Um, if we have a look, I've just so, so seen that Juventus have been very active, as have Roma as well. Brought in three players, got rid of three players. Dzeko is one of them. They've sold Edin Dzeko. Now, that is surprising, to be fair, considering it doesn't look like they've brought in um, a striker. Let's see who else is on this list. Torino looking a little bit active as well. Fair play to them. Uh, what have we got? Atalanta, where are they at? They haven't made too much signs, of course, any time. Barini from us. Are they mad? I uh, just want to look at lots of Inter Milan, Juventus, Lazio, see what they've done. Inter Milan have spent big. They've sold Skriniar, though, which is a surprise, especially if they're playing that free back under Antonio Conte. Um, you'd think they'd, they'd keep Skriniar. They've signed Tara as a replacement, but is that a like for like replacement? Not in my opinion. Xhaka as well, they've brought in. <laughs> okay, suit yourself. Um, so they've been pretty active. We do have them soon, by the way. Uh, Lazio brought in Falqui. Jardel got rid of Bastos and Wallace. So two defenders they get rid of, really. That's surprising to see. They don't really, they don't sign one. Uh, having a look at Napoli here. They get rid of Gulam and Arcadius Milik and uh, sign a few players. Signed 91 million worth of players, including Wilfred Zaha. So that's very interesting that they've signed him. wonder how he will fit into their scheme. Uh, having a look at here, Piemonte Calcio, IU Juventus. <coughs> they only bring in one player, but they've sold a lot of players. 111 million worth. Alexandro, De Silio, Rugani, Kadira, Mandzukic. Wow, that is some going. I'm, a, I'm guessing that's going to be Benjamin Mendy they've signed. Otherwise, I would be very surprised that they've signed, uh, sold essentially two left backs, Sanzo and Decilio, and haven't, um, you know, made, formed a contingency plan. And so that rounds it off for deadline day. Having a look there, let's see what have we got in our notification. Did the Rodriguez deal get completed in time? This is the question. Um, no, broken down as talks as well. Terms couldn't be agreed. Got more offers. Rainer, Castillejo as well. Let's have a look at these before we can move on to our next game. We're going to reject the offer for Reina again. Um, our point still stands. Castillejo. Now, Spurs have come in. They're offering money. If we sell him, he will not go until January. So, this might be okay. Again, he's not getting a much of a... a, a well, he hasn't had a look in at all at the moment. In real life, I'm personally not very high on Castillejo. I don't think um, he has what it takes. I think he's too um, one-dimensional. I think... Mentality-wise, there's a lot of questions there. So I'm going to ask for 29 million. I'm going to delegate it as well. And if we can get something along those lines, maybe we put 27.5 as a minimum. I'm willing to accept that, to be honest, and I think that could be a very good deal for us. So we'll go with that. In terms of player player chats there, one of the says thank you. Um, I'll say stay grounded. That's fine. Wanted to let you know that I'm a bit rude having read some of the speculation surrounding me. Piatek basically is asking for a chance. I'll say I'll consider it, but at the end of the day, Liao played really well. He's not starting next game because Liao is, is the man for the next game. So um, next game we've got Hayas Verona. I'm now going to simulate towards that match and then um, you know I'll be back with you to show you the lineup. So welcome back everyone. It is the day of the Verona game. 
And a couple of notes just to give you beforehand. First of all, um, in terms of the Castellejo transfer, you will remember Spurs did offer for him. Well, an agreement has been reached. 29 million. Absolutely delighted to get that much. Hopefully, they can agree terms because that's a great deal for us. We also had an offer from her for Berlin for David Calab Calabria. Um, 18 million. I rejected it. I've got no, no um, intention of selling him, of course. He does epitomise, as do many other players. He's out of the academy. We're developing him. He's young. Um, you know, we want to keep those players here. So, um, no, we'll be rejecting that one. Um, and also, I just thought it's worth mentioning in episode three, the next episode, we do, of course, have the Inter Milan game at home. Um, well, I suppose it, it wouldn't matter either way, would it? It's always at home. But, um, you know, the feature list reads at home. We do have Inter Milan, so that's a massive game. That will be in episode three, so just make sure you come along uh, for that one as well. But today, we do have Hairs Verona. Looking forward to this game. Of course, another newly promoted side. Um, so, you know, we've got, a, we've got a good fixture list to start off the season. The question is, can we make the most of it? Now, uh, I'm going to make a couple of changes here, or one or two changes. Bilia will be replaced by Ben Akeh, um, who, you know, did sort of settle into the game in the end. Had a slightly slow start, but he did settle into the game. Um, so, uh, I'll give him that. And um, also, we're going to bring on Conti onto the bench for Rodriguez as well. He's going to be our, essentially our right-back option. We've got a left-back option in Lazal as well as left midfield. So, um, you know, I've got no qualms about putting him in there. And uh, with that in mind, I think we're ready to go otherwise and that. It's a settled side. And uh, hopefully we can get another three points on the board and march at the table a little bit. Here we go. Away we go then. Can we make it two wins out of two in this episode today? It's going to be a tough game. Here we go. Oh, he's got a run there. It's into Benakir. It's a great opportunity. Oh, no, he's bowled it. Absolutely bottled the chance. I could have squared it as well, but it just developed too late. I'd already pressed the button by the time Liao had gotten into that position, but I cannot believe he's missed that straight at the keeper. Benakir storming forward. Suso this time over an opportunity. Kessier will come out wide to Rebic. Bonaventura. Kessier, Benakir, trying to work an opening here. Rebic running behind. It's not the best of balls. He'll come across. Liao's there. 1-0. Finally, we've worked an opening. It wasn't actually Liao. It was Kessier. Thought that would be the position Liao was in. He's actually at the back post. Kessier runs in and uh, drops off into that sort of deeper position into the box. And it works out well. It's good play as well. We were just probing for an opening. Rebic is the one who peels off. Produces a good pass into the box and Kessier's there. It's a calm finish. That's how it's done, Benakir, my friend. And it's more than deserved, to be fair. We've had you know, more possession. We've had one or two half chances. And finally, we break the deadlock. 1-0. Roa, well, that's half-time. 1-0 so far. Not a whole lot to show you guys. And I, I do apologise for that. Might only be a, a one or two highlights. Um, you know, but thankfully we are in the lead. That is, of course, the most important thing. There's a little bit of sloppiness, so I've got to say, Benakir in, in particular, he's played poor. He's played very poor. He's given the ball away a lot. But the thing is, we don't have a lot in that position to sort of bring on. You can play Kessier there uh, in a deeper role, but he's, you know, his strength for me is box to box, and, and therefore we leave ourselves a little bit open there. So, oh no, that's something we do need to look at because. Um, you know, he's not having the best of games. But thankfully, it is 1-0 so far. Um, and on to the second half. Kessier. Bonaventura. Yeah. Oh, he's got a run from Bonaventura here. It's a good opportunity. Great strike from Bonaventura. 2-0. And once again, he gets onto the score sheet. He's had a great start to the season. Teams up well. Bibliao. And it's another fine finish. Just a give and go yet again. Similar to the goal in the first episode. And Bonaventura on his left foot as well. Just strikes in. It's a brilliant finish. Laces it. And the keeper can't get there because it's so well placed into the far corner. You can't sniff at that one. That's another really good finish. Well deserved lead. And it's 2-0. 
something, and this is it, the substitution. If they can continue in this vein, they've been so good out here today. Oh, no. Given straight away. He's going to chip him. For f sake. How stupid that was. Tried to go to Benacare. Um, I was just asking for trouble. It's really my fault. You know, player was there. Just looking to play it out. I didn't see the need to smash up the field, but players were marked for Benacare. As you can see, he's free there. Tried to go to him. Why on earth is his replay? Um, and it doesn't pay off. Fair play, they press well. But, you know, that's on my head, that is. And he chips him. And they're back into the game. Gifted them a route back into the game here. It's 2 1 now. And we need to uh, regain control. Calabria into Leo. Benekir got an opportunity to strike it. Safe from the keeper on the rebound. They get it away. Oh, it's a great save from Donnarumma on the rebound. Goes just wide. Wow. They've applied the pressure there. I can't believe that. Such a brilliant save from Donnarumma that was. Weren't expecting much on that cross. So I stayed silent and then all of a sudden the chance comes out of nowhere. Verona had a brilliant opportunity to equalise there. They should have taken it. Benekir trying to chase him. He's very slow. And he can't keep up with him somehow. This is really disappointing. And Donnarumma, wow, catch that. He tips it for a corner. Dear me. And Verona all of a sudden looking dangerous here. Get it away. Yes, we do. Verona might have one final attack here. Which is not promising at all. They're working it with the field nice here. We played him offside there. No, somehow someone, someone's played him onside. We get it away. Kessier. And there it is. 2-1 in the end. Well, that was nervy at the end. That was too nervy for my liking. Thankfully, we get the win. First half, we played really well. Thoroughly deserved to be in the lead. Second half, we scored the goal. All well and good, but then they score. And all of a sudden, it... The momentum just switches, just turns on its head a little bit. And, you know, it's a nervy end to the game. But, most importantly, it is three points. And that makes it two wins out of three. Frustrating. I'm just going to advance, skip the uh, post-match interview. It's frustrating, of course, that we didn't get the three wins. Um, you know, we really should have beaten Udinese. They were there for the taking. But, you know, we're, uh, we are working the process. And the table will currently read that we are in fifth place so uh, in the first three games that's not too bad um, you know only one point behind top and Cagliari wow they have had a fantastic start to the season two wins and one draw leaves in top as well as Lazio and Fiorentina Juventus draw two of their first games now that is massive Inter Milan uh, have a game in hand to be fair but they've had a bad start as well and Napoli have lost all three of their games so that is pretty astounding um, and is a pretty shocking uh, start to the season for, you know, really the, the the expected top teams. So, yeah, that's certainly something we need to keep our eye on. In terms of the next episode, the big one, Inter Milan at home. Can't wait for that game. That's going to be a really tough game, but it's good to see where we'll be at. Um, and I hope you guys are going to join me for that. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like to let me know that you are enjoying the content. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. Um, so that you get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to check out my Manchester United PES 2020 series as well if you haven't uh, done so already. And on that note, we are going to finish it there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Come on.